Hey kiddos, welcome to Genetics, your last flipped video of the year. Shake what your mama gave you. Oh, because your mama gave, gave it, it to you. you. Yay! So this is all why you got what you got. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, as a human being, you have what's called 23 pairs of chromosomes. Okay, not all living things have the same amount of pairs. Yeah, but we're humans. So we have 23 pairs, um, and you have 23 pairs in every single one of your cells. So you did cells very, in the very beginning. Now you kind of know what's hanging out in your cell. You get one chromosome for each pair from each parent. So for instance, if you look at the chromosome number one there, you got one of those from your mom and one of those for your dad, which is why you always have a pair of each. So if you have 23 pairs, a pair is two. Two times 23 usually equals 46. So humans should have 46 chromosomes. Yep. Okay, so we need to go a little math on you, and I'm assuming you know this since we have awesome math teachers, but probability is just talking about the number that describes how likely an event will occur. So if I toss a coin, I have a 50-50 chance of getting on heads or tails. When I play the lottery, I have one in like 20 kabillion chance of winning the lottery. Mm -hmm. Just so we're clear, kabillion is not a real number. Use it in math class. I like to see her reaction. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's some tricky terms here. Okay, so we have what's called a phenotype, okay? A phenotype refers to how the characteristic actually looks. So your hair color, blonde, your eye color, blue, that's your phenotype. Um, an easy way to remember that is that phenotype starts with a P, so it's going to be the physical appearance. Yeah, it's kind of nice, that alliteration going on there. Genotype, on the other hand, is the alleles. Remember we talked about that capital letter versus lowercase letter? that combination is what's called the genotype okay right. so we got to be clear as far as if we're talking phenotype and genotype so in the bottom right hand corner there you'll see that it gives you the phenotype and the genotype for different characteristics right so smooth is going to be dominant here and you can have two dominant genes for smoothness with your pea pods or you could be a hybrid you really don't know your genotype unless you do some genetic testing mm -hmm. or some reproduction. And then when you are recessive, like pinched pea pods are recessive, so you do know their genotype. You know it's lowercase, lowercase. You know he has two recessive genes. Yep. So phenotype, physical, genotype, genetic. Kind of nice. Okay, two more words here. Um, homozygous and heterozygous. Okay, so homozygous, I want you to look at the root word, and I know you know other words that use the term homo, like if you're homo, oops, sorry about that. If you're homosexual, you are interested in the same sex. If you're homozygous, homo means same, you're going to have the same identical alleles for a trait. So you could be two dominants or two recessives, and that makes you homozygous. Hetero, if you're heterosexual, a boy is interested in a girl, so hetero means different. So I could assume you would have different alleles. So one capital letter, one lowercase letter. Or you're a hybrid. Ooh, Look at all that well stuff. Well played. Okay, so this is what we talked about in our last so video much fun. about Punnett squares. And Punnett squares are actually really Love fun. It. So Punnett square is what is used in order to see what the possible offspring could have based on characteristics. So the way that you set up your Punnett square is you start by drawing a box that has four squares. Okay. Out to the side of each box, you are going to put the alleles that the parents have. So on the left side of your box, you have a capital R and a lowercase r. Those are your dad's alleles, okay? On the top of the box, you have your mom's alleles, capital R, lowercase r. And then we simply just cross them. So you're going to take your capital R, put it in the first box, capital Push R. Push it across. You're right. Yeah, okay, I'm you're sorry. pushing it across. And then, so you're going to do from left to right, and then you're going to do from top to bottom. So let's push so, those guys across. Yep. And then next, bring the other parents down. Top to bottom. So then you end up with two letters in each square. And then you can see the two, what the two letters would be. So right there, you have three children that have a capital R. And that means, okay. oh, there has to be a key. So we know capital R means you're round. And then you have one child who has... Wrinkled, the wrinkled allele. 
Yeah. Okay. So here's one done for you. I, I don't know my little rodent-like things. Is this a hamster? I think it's a guinea pig. I cannot tell those three apart. Hamster, yeah. guinea pig, or... It's a guinea pig. Okay. So you got your little rodent thing. One is a purebred black. One is purebred white. Mm -hmm. Some cultures eat guinea pigs. Gross. Actually, Anyhow, I don't really know that. Purebred black, you put his big B here, big B here, little B here, little B here. So you push her little Bs across. Everybody gets a little B because that's all she has to give. Mm -hmm. Get Push these big Bs down because that's all he has to give. So every one of their offspring is hybrid. Now note, some animals are not like people. When a black man and a white woman reproduce, the child's color is not black or white. Usually it's a mix. Mm -hmm. And so humans are different. We have multiple genes that control skin color. A lot of simpler animals, like this rodent thing, isn't that way. And it is black or white. Yep. Or brown or white or right. whatever colors it is. This or offer. that. Okay. But it's not always that easy. There are some exceptions to this. And when you don't have one gene that is dominant over the other, so if you don't have the black color of the guinea pig covering up the white color of the guinea pig, that's what's called co-dominance. So similar to what Miss Millis was talking about, that if you have one white parent and one black parent, that the skin color then reflects both. Yeah. The same thing can happen in animals as well. That if you have, these are both roosters, or One hens. has to be a chicken. One's a hen. Because you can't have two roosters. But a hen? Are they chicken? hens? I don't know. Hen. I'm not a farmer. Too many Ask hens Hoffman. in a hen house. <laughs> hen and a rooster. Okay? So if you have a white hen and a black rooster, instead of one covering the other color, they're actually going to combine colors and you're going to end up with black and white roosters. And you'll see them on there. So. Mm -hmm. Um, this just expresses that it is in, or it's co-dominance, co and you'll see once you have a hybrid kind of mixture, the chicken or the, the offspring will look hybridish. Now, one thing I wanted to point out here with um, this one, what we will expect you to do, how do I get a pin on here? Let's see. Sorry, I'm now being kind of obnoxious. How do I get a pin? No idea. I don't think you can. Oh, there it is. I knew you can. Just kidding. Yes, you can. Okay. One thing we do expect you to do when we talk about probability is we kind of want to say you to list the probability of this happening. So for the offspring, 100% will be big B, little b, 100%, mm -hmm. which also means 100% will be black. Yep. And I expect you to do this, or we expect you to do this with all your Punnett squares. Whoa. Millis? Get your game in the gear. So, or your head in the game. Get your head in the game. <laughs> so 100% black. Get your head in the game. But you need to recall that there's four sections here, so each one is worth 25%. Mm -hmm. So you get so 25, math 50, there. 75, 100. Now when you do your letters, I want you to be clear. A lot of us have really poor handwriting and you kind of think it's funny at this point. It's not, but you need to make sure your big capital B is a capital B and your lowercase b looks like a lowercase b. You have to be extra careful because we'll give you some assignments next. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the letter might be C. Well, a capital C's shape is identical to the lowercase c's shape. It is only the size that helps you determine if it's capital or lowercase. So you need to be purposeful when you write these letters because I'm not going to be forgiving on any assessment if you wrote the wrong one down. And if we can't tell the difference, then we're going to count it wrong. Exactly. So. so you are being warned. Be careful with your handwriting and make sure you're communicating this. Okay, any other thoughts? Nope, come to us if you have any questions, but Punnett squares are cool, so enjoy the next couple assignments. Yep, over and out.